Hey everyone, welcome back to Basic Level Gaming. And today I'm really excited. We're going to start our series on learning to play chess. And we're going to we're going to start with the extreme basics. We're going to talk about the pieces today, um, a little bit about how they move and where they start on the board. Um, and then we will move on from there. Uh, so definitely glad you've joined us and hopefully we'll be able to progress together um, and I, I will be uh, open up front on this one I have a little bit more experience than um, like recent experience I've been playing around on chess.com um, and I did join their their site and I paid the membership because it's something that I've decided I do want to do seriously hopefully even getting to the point of playing in tournaments and things like that I've still got a, a ways to go I haven't really played I haven't really played chess at all since I was a kid, um, so we are kind of starting over in a way, although I've realized I've remembered a lot more than I thought I did, so we will go from here. Uh, today, like I said, we're going to start out by looking at the pieces, how they move, um, kind of get everybody started, and then uh, hopefully we will eventually get a lot of people interested in, in playing chess. I know it's a big thing right now, a lot of searches and stuff about it just because of um, the Queen's Gambit being so popular on Netflix, which was a great move or a great show if you haven't watched it. Um, I did enjoy it. It's not actually really about chess, I wouldn't say. It's much more about her interaction with chess and her um, learning kind of herself and things like that, but there's a lot of chess content in it, so it's really interesting. Um, so we're going to start out. I'm going to use some some stuff from the chess.com site. Um, I have gotten permission from them. Definitely check them out if you are looking for you know more in-depth lessons. Um, we're going to cover a lot of the basics here. We're going to cover some more advanced stuff later. Uh, but if you're just looking for a little bit more content, they are great. I've went through a lot of their challenges. Uh, and it's a great place to actually play as well because you get to play against a random person. It really helps you challenge yourself and learn. So, so we're going to start out here. We've got this piece here. A lot of people call it a castle. Uh, it's it's actually called a rook, and it's actually a really powerful piece. It's not the most powerful, but it's a really strong piece because it has the ability to move as many spaces as it can within as long as there's nothing in the way. So like this one right here could move all the way to the top of the board. It could move all the way to the bottom of the board and all the way to the right of the board and anywhere in between. So it doesn't have to go all the way. It could go from here to here or here to here. So it can go anywhere along that path. It cannot go diagonal. That's the one big limitation of a rook is that it cannot travel in these these directions here. It can also go left if it's not on the edge of the board already. So, and the rooks start out in the corners. So you get two of them. So you'll this one will go right here, and then this one will go right here. And then from there, the next piece that you're going to be looking at, and this is actually one of my favorite pieces because it's easy to sneak up on people with it, but it is also one of the most complicated pieces. So this is the knight. Um, I've heard it called a lot of different things, but the horse. Uh, it's easier if you learn it, though, as the knight, since that's what it's actually called, and that helps later on when you're learning, like, notations and things like that. This one, I've always learned it as described as moving in an L shape. So it's it can be one over and two up, one over and two down. It can be one up and two over, and it can be one down and two over. And it can go left as well if it's not on the edge of the board. So, and we'll get into more like exactly how to control squares and things like that and, and how that impacts it. The one thing that's a huge advantage for the knight is it can jump over pieces. So, like for example, 
I can go down two and over one here, which is the same as going this way as well, by the way. And that rook does not get in my way. Or if there was a piece right here, it doesn't get in the way. The knight can still go. And you can see right here how it's got those four dots right there. Those are four spaces that I can travel to. And I would have the same exact four on the other side if I was in the middle of the board, which is where you typically are going to want to have your knight unless you're actively being aggressive with it. Um, because in the middle of the board, it gets a lot more options. So, um, But it starts right here. And again, you get two of them. So you got the two there. So the next piece that we're looking at is going to be the bishop, is what it's called. This one's kind of, I don't know, it was a hard one for me to remember the name of, just because it's like, that doesn't, I don't, what's a bishop look like? So, but that's what it's called, is a bishop. And the bishops are kind of the opposite of the rook. So they can move as many squares as they can without hitting anything in the way. But they can only travel diagonally. So this bishop here, which is called the dark squared bishop, it will never land on a white square. It will only go on dark squares. So, and it, it, but again, it can go anywhere along the path as long as there's nothing in the way. And we'll talk about like capturing pieces and things like that later as well. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. It just, it, like I said, it stays on its squares. And you get two of these as well. So this one's the dark squared bishop, and it starts right next to here, um, next to the knight on the dark square. And then you also get a light squared bishop. And this one will always be on light squares. It will never go on a dark square. This here is the most versatile were a piece on the board, I believe, in, in my opinion. Um, it can go any direction. Get your diagonals, sideways, up, down, um, as long as there's nothing in the way. Now it can, like I said, we'll talk about capturing later, but it ultimately has the freedom to go wherever there is an open square in its path. It can be one square, two square, all the way up to eight squares if it's on the edge. And basically, it just, it can't change directions. So like it can't, I can't move here and here in the same turn. So you can only go one direction per turn. And that's the same ultimately with all of them, with the exception of the knight, with the kind of going two directions. And it starts always on its own colored square. So the white queen is going to be on a white square. The dark queen will be on the dark square. So that's how you can always... I had a hard time when I was starting out trying to remember, like, where's the queen go versus the king? Because in case you haven't guessed it, the king's going to be next. <laughs> it's going to go in the open spot. Um, but it's just easy to remember if you always think of the white queen going in the white square. Also, when you set up the board, because normally if you're looking at a physical board, you're not going to have necessarily these coordinates on here. So you can always know to put a dark square in the bottom left of the board. Because if you, if you turn this and you put this light square on the bottom of the board, it doesn't, things don't line up right. And you'll notice that if you ever try to do it, like your queens don't look right and it just doesn't line up because they're the same. So you always want to put a dark square in the bottom left corner. So it's just kind of an easy thing to remember, keep you, you know, in line. So here's our king. Now, this is one of the most, well, it's the most important piece, but it's not the most powerful piece. Um... It only can move one square. So it can go in any direction, as long as there's nothing in the way, but it only gets to move one square. This is the piece you have to protect. You cannot let it get taken. If it would get taken, then the game's over. So it's important to keep it protected at all times. 
and it goes right here next to the queen. And then on the other side of the board, you're going to have the black pieces do the exact same thing. Now there's one more piece here, and I'm, I'm going to try to clip it, cut in a video or a picture here with the full board set up. But one more piece goes here, and there's actually eight of them across the board. And they are, people think they're very simplistic pieces and not really that big a deal when you get started. They actually are very powerful in how much they shape the board because these are called pawns. And the pawn can only go straight up or if you're on the top of the board straight down. They they cannot go sideways. They cannot go diagonal with the exception of capturing, which we'll talk later, but they can only march straight to the other side. And if you get one all the way to the other side, then it becomes whatever piece you want, which most of the time you're gonna pick the queen, of course. Um, but So that's always a bonus goal to, to get them all the way across the board because it really gives you a big chunk of the board control and that's not always the easiest to do and we'll we'll talk a lot more um, in later times about how to work towards that how important that is and and things like that but just know they always only go straight up the board so those are the basics and how the pieces all move and how they're set up we're going to talk more next time about how to capture pieces because to me, next to just knowing how they move, that's really the most important thing is you want to capture the opponent's piece and you need to know how to do that. So that'll be something we'll really target next time. And if there's any specifics that you want me to clarify on or any questions you have, by all means, leave a comment down below. I will answer it the best I can there. And if I need to do a little thing at the beginning of the next video, we will do that. Um, this is going to be a, a little bit of a experiment for me. I'm pretty new on trying to build a video quite like this since my other videos, as hopefully you've seen, are videos of gameplay so they're just straight in so um, if there's any feedback you have let me know as well uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on those notifications I will upload to this series every Tuesday and Thursday uh, so hopefully we'll see you back then and uh, have a great day